Acts chapter 1 verse 3 it says blessed be God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ oh look at it it said just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love before the foundation of the world God chose you to be holy in other words he has made you holy with his holiness and without blame so you are unblameable but now we find out that people are getting sick people are getting broke people are getting attacked by the enemy what is the problem when you are blessed of God you shouldn't go through all these trials but guess what we are living in a rebellious world where the devil does not have regard for God Amen. does it matter what you see now put this verse before you every day you declare that God has blessed you you might look at your bank account it might look red no you are blessed you are rich you are loaded that is your confession that is how you give heed to the word of god you declare what god will say 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days in a year you enforce your victory it says just as he chooses verse 4 in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy he chose you to be holy in the world he has made you holy you are holy you are not trying to be holy you are already holy he chose you to be holy amen because he has chosen you to be holy why would you be sick why will they rush you to the hospital why where would that sickness come because you are holy how come you are broke how come you don't have money it's because we live in a rebellious world oh let us look at first John chapter 5 verse 11. That is why it's very important for you to embrace the word of God. No matter what, look go for the word. It is the word of God that shows you your picture. The word of his grace. First John chapter 5 and verse 11. Oh. Somebody say, How you doing? Don't say things are rough. They say how you do you say i am blessed you might be going through severe trial right now your statement should be i am blessed i am blessed i am blessed i am blessed it doesn't matter what you're going through you are blessed first john chapter 5 verse 11 oh i love this he said and this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life and this life is in his son look at the construction he said god has given god has it is a done deal you have eternal life verse 12 he said he who has the son has life he who does not have the son of god does not have life that's why we go around getting people born again letting them know that they have to be born again they can belong to a religious church they can be faithful they can be nice but with that they cannot have eternal life eternal life is what brings them into the blessings of god he said this is the testimony in other words the bible is the proof that god has given us eternal life and this life is in his son this life is not in heaven this life is in jesus when you have jesus you have this life this life is the same life that god has the same very life that god has the greek word is called zoe eternal life is in us we are not looking for eternal life we already have it and when you have eternal life you cannot remain sick you cannot remain broken because you have this victory inside of you hallelujah but a lot of times you find yourself a situation that is contrary but how do you correct this how can you change your world how can you change your situation 
Some people say, oh God, do this for me. Oh God, bless me. Oh God, heal me. Oh God, me give me money. That is the wrong prayer. That is why things are keep that is why things keep getting worse. God has already done it. Once you are born again, it is finished. Jesus cried, I say it is finished. Oh dear Jesus. Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us look at Hebrew chapter eleven. With what you are learning tonight, with what you are hearing tonight, you can change anything. You see, it doesn't matter how you were born. It doesn't matter which family we are born into. Maybe it's the worst family with generational curses, with this, with that. It doesn't matter. God is expecting you to change things. Hallelujah. Hebrew chapter 11. Hebrew chapter 11. Glory to God. Somebody tell me in my family this is what it hap- this is what happened. This is what happened. Oh, you know, people don't get to age so so and so in my family, or they get sick. This is the type of sickness. It doesn't matter anymore. Once you are born again, you have eternal life. Oh, glory to God. Amen. You have it. You may not feel it, you may not look like it like you have it, you have it already inside of you. Eternal life is the same life that God has. The day I found this out, I said, Wow, I will never be the same anymore. Never, never, never. You see, it it is yeah. all right. Woo. Say with me, say I refuse to fail. I say what we say. I refuse to. You know, I just let us look at Hebrew chapter eleven. Oh, please take note. Take note. Take note. Take note. Hallelujah. Mm. I'm just looking for people who are going to be millionaires by this time next year. But you have to Amen. stick to the <laughs> word. You <laughs> got to stick to the word. Oh. Ah, if, if you fail, it's your fault. You can't blame your husband, you can't blame your wife, you can't blame your children, you can't blame your boss, you can't blame nobody. Verse 3. It said, By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. This is the formula. He said, by faith, the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Oh, look at this word. Look at the world. He said, by faith, we understand that the world, the world, the Greek word is aeon. It means your course of life, the way a manner that you live. He said they were framed. In other words, they were created by the word of God. That word of God, mark it. It's not just the uh, it's not the logos. It's the rhema, the spoken word of God. You see, yeah. in Genesis chapter one, God created the heaven and the earth. The Bible said that it was void. And now say the Spirit of God move over it. When God looked through the windows of heaven, He didn't say it's so dark out there. He didn't say it was bad. All He said is light be. And the Bible said light came into existence. You see, the Word of God can replace what is seen. You can bring in what you want to replace what is seen by the Word of God. Faith believes the Word and begins to speak it. In spite of the contrary visible lies of the devil. Okay. Let's say you're feeling pain. You're feeling symptoms in your body. So what you're feeling, what is seen now is sickness. What is not seen is health. So what do you do? You use the word of God to bring in health to replace sickness. Are you hearing me? Looking at your account, you may not like your account. But you can use the word of God to bring in wealth. Use the word of God to bring in money. Maybe you are weak. You don't feel it looks like things are not working well. Go into the word of God and find out what God has said and begin to bring it in to replace what you have. 
He said yeah. the word of God was used. Oh, glory to God. Amen. That the walls were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Wow. So when somebody is sick, health we are made by what is not visible, which is the word of God. It's not through medication. It's not through surgery. So you use Amen. the word of God to bring in health. If you have a little rebellious circumstance around you, around you, you use the word of God to make correction. You can subdue anything that does not line up with the word of God. The Bible says that thanks be to God who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Spiritual blessing. That's why it is yeah. impossible for you to fail if you choose to walk by faith. The word mm -hmm. framed is a Greek word. It means it's a Greek word called katakizo. It means to correct, to amend, to fix, and to put in order, to comply to what God's word said. You see, when those guys were trying to attack me back in Africa, I knew that the word of God says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no for thou art with me. Why is God with me? He's with me to put me over. So I began to frame my environment with the word of God. And before long, the power of God subdued every one of them. So as a yeah. Christian, you can never take chances by being quiet. You must be a radical talker of the word of God. You must be very noisy with the word of God. You know, mm -hmm. I, I used to feel like, oh, let me be a very cool, calm, quiet Christian. I find out that cool, calm, quiet Christian automatically get defeated. And they think because they are cool, faithful, that God should always come to their aid. But no, look at the formula here. It said by faith. What is faith? Faith is believing the word of God and begin to speak it. Faith Amen. has a voice. You must speak the yeah. word of God. You must use the word of God to make correction, to subdue and change things and let them conform. You see, we are still learning. We are still growing. He said by faith, we understand that the word of God, that the walls, which is your, your life, the course of your life is the walls. We are framed. In other words, we are corrected. We are put in order. We are mended by the word of God. So that the things which are seen are not made of the things which are visible. What is not visible is the word of God. You can't see the word of God yeah. with the spirits. As you release these words over your circumstances, as you release this word over your business, as you release this word over your body, whatever is damaged, whatever is not correct will be corrected. In the mighty name yeah. of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Now, let us look at Romans chapter 4 and verse 17. Then we're going to pray. The reason why we're laying this foundation is that it's very important for you to pray correctly. We're on a prayer line, you know, of what you just get on a prayer line, we just pray, 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 and we say, Amen, we go back, there's no change. No, on this prayer line, there must be changes in the mighty name of Jesus. Romans chapter in 4, the mighty name there of must Jesus. be changes, yeah. because we are the doer of the word of God. Hallelujah. Romans yeah. chapter 4, Hallelujah. thank you, Father. I can't tell you how many people I pray for in Africa that received their miracle. They received healing, different kind of, you know, deliverance. Because I choose yeah. to stick to the word of God. Declaring the word of God 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Now look at Romans chapter 4 and verse 17. It says, as it is written. Are you there? Oh, yeah. Jesus. My God. Holy Spirit, thank you. Mm, my, 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 my. As it is written, I have made you father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed. Now watch this. It says, God who gives life to the dead and call those things which do not exist as though they did. Verse 17. God gives life to the dead. That is what God specializes in. He gives life to the dead. It doesn't matter what his circumstances yeah. look like. God can give life back. He can bring restoration. He can bring total restoration back to you. 
it doesn't matter your dream yeah. maybe what you have hoped for the enemy cut it short it doesn't matter the enemy don't count if you can lay hold no. of the word of god that's why i don't even talk about my enemies anymore i used to talk about my enemies my enemies oh i have this i have that this enemy have these people until in 2015 god spoke to me don't talk about your enemies anymore i say wow how can i do that don't you see how many people surround me then i now found out that the greater one is at work in me you see when you magnify your enemies the problems become bigger and bigger but when you magnify god the power of God will rise over your enemies. He said, God, who gives mm. life to the dead? God, who gives life to the dead? And calls those things which do not exist as though they did. All right, let's look at this example. Let's say somebody has diabetes. Right? So this is how God feels. Yeah. What exists? What exists is diabetes. That's sickness. What does not exist is health. Look at the formula. They say God calls those things that be not as though they did. Not, they so that means instead of people mm -hmm. going around saying they have diabetes, they have diabetes, oh, their diabetes is killing them. God say, call yourself heal. You go around saying, I'm yeah. healed. I am strong. Yeah. I am sound. I am rich. I'm a millionaire. I'm a multimillionaire in US dollars. You may not have anything. You know, today I was in the store. <laughs> the anointing came upon me so heavily. And I began to speak to myself. I said, I'm rich. I'm prosperous. And it got so heavy that anyone that comes close to me, I just look at their eyes and say, Oh, I am rich. I am prosperous. They were looking at me and saying, well, something was wrong. What was I doing? I was framing my world. He said, He calls those things that do not exist as though they did. Wow. And look at verse. Thank you, God. Who, contrary to hope, in hope, believe, he's talking about Abraham, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. Sisters, brothers, if any, what has been spoken to you? What has God spoken to you? God told Abraham, so shall your descendants be. That was what Abraham held, held to. He just had God say, so shall your descendants be. And Abraham didn't have any child. Look at verse 19. Oh boy. Oh, mm -hmm. this, I, I, I hear you already. He said, and not being weak in faith. Mark that in your Bible. Not being weak in faith. He did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20. Oh dear Jesus, I feel you. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. You see, most Christians, they have what is called weak faith. Weak faith considers the circumstance and begin to say what the devil tells them. For instance, God say you are healed. Now, you have a stomach uh, issue or your back is healed, paining you. So what do people do? Most people just go back, go out and say, oh, this back is killing them. It hurts so bad. It hurts. It hurts. Now, that's what weak faith does. Weak faith feels that pain. I begin to say it is painful. It hurts. Now, strong faith... Mm, does not consider the body strong faith declare god's word 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days in a year and 366 days in a leap year so as you declare the word of god over and over it may take time but the key is that you must be consistent you must say what god will say every time you must declare the word of god over yourself same thing you do not look at the circumstance and say what the circumstance says you say what god's word says Tonight, as we are praying, oh, Holy Spirit, there's going to be corrections in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Everything that the enemy damaged, the they will be corrected. Why? Because yeah. the Bible says, through faith, our worlds oh, yeah. were created. 
It doesn't oh, matter. The yeah, That's why yeah. I, say, I say I cannot fail in life. It's not possible. It's not possible because I have the word of God. The Bible says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It is a done deal. It's a greater is he that is at work in you that anything that can come against you what you do every morning you begin to declare that word as you begin to declare the word the more difficult the situation is the more stubborn your faith is the more stubborn your faith is the stronger you begin to declare the word and make those corrections that you need to make in your life and you begin to see changes maybe you are going through financial difficulties now instead of saying you are broke you don't have money Oh no, you can't say that. You can't talk like that. You have to declare the word of God that you have the life of God in you. Because you have eternal life. Eternal life. God cannot be broke. Anyway, can God be broke? I don't think so. God can never be broke. Because you have what God have. What God have. He puts it in you. I said it in his word. He said you have it. You have it. If you don't agree with God's word, it will not work. Don't try to be humble and say you are poor. Don't try to be humble and say you are broke. Don't try to be humble and say, who can be like God? We are not like God. But he said, He, whatever he has, he has already put in us. So for it to work, you have to correct your statement. You have to say what God will say every time. This is the victory that we have. Hallelujah. Amen. This is our victory. Amen. This is the word that I want to hold on to tonight. As you hold on to this word, give yourself a few a few days, a few weeks, a few months, and be consistent. You're going to begin to see changes because the power is already inside of you. The anointing of God's Spirit is inside of you already. As you make this proclamation, as you make this declaration, look at Romans chapter 4. I mean, <laughs> oh boy. Verse 17. Oh, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. That's what God says. He calls those things which do, don't exist as though they exist. So tonight, we're just going to pray in the Holy Ghost. We're going to thank God that we are already blessed. You know, every time I pray, I don't take God to bless me anymore. Because I found out that He has already blessed me. If you ask God to bless you, you pray in unbelief. And that's why we use faith to make corrections. You know, the situation might be painful. The situation might look like so ugly, but when you stick to the word of God, you are going to see changes. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1, it says we should hold on to the word of God so that we will not drift away. As we are praying tonight, you are going to ask God for spiritual insight into his word. For God to open the eyes of yeah. understanding so you can lay hold of yeah. his word. Right. You know, the time of uh, prophetic ministries you know i love prophetic ministry i used to be so radical where you like to go where they they will see visions for you they will see something they will see signs uh, if you want to experience this victory you have to put that aside because the devil operates in that arena as well actually there are so many people who have gone to prophetic ministry and the prophets the so-called fake prophet they have messed up their lives I was sharing with somebody today how, um, you know, they have used false prophecy, prophesy and prophet lie to take people's wives, yeah. to take people's husbands, to take their property. You know, you go to this church, you start prophesying, telling you, I see this, I see that. I'm not trying to condemn them, but there's a better way. Somebody say better way. And the best way is to use the word of God. And that is faith. With that word of God, with faith, you can never go wrong. You become your own prophet. You prophesy over yourself. You declare over yourself that you are rich. I see me wealthy. I see me strong. I see me healthy. I see me vibrant in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Maybe there's any pain in your body. You have been treating that pain in your body. It's time for you to say, Satan, no. In the name of Jesus get out of my body by the stripes of jesus i am healed i am making that confession sometimes you find out when you start praying like this things get worse once you start sensing that things are getting worse that means your prayer is working the enemies try to uh, to force you 
to say you are sick, to force you to say you are you are broke, to force you to say other things that you're not supposed to say. But you have to maintain your confession. Hallelujah. You have to use the word of God Hallelujah. to frame your aeon, to correct whatever is wrong. The time to, to have pity party, the time to be crying, the time to be telling everybody what you are going through, those days are over. It's time to use the word of God to frame your world. As we have read in Hebrews chapter 3. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hebrew chapter 11 and verse 3. I, 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 will, I would like to give us this as homework because mm-hmm. I, I, I want to see tremendous progress in our lives, including mine. There has to be tremendous progress. And what the Lord has taught me is what I'm sharing with every one of us on the prayer line. So, my father has cried. We have received prophetic words 10, 20 years ago, and we're still waiting. Some people say you are waiting on God, but God is waiting on you. God is waiting on you to bring all those things that you heard, all those dreams, all those mm-hmm. words that were spoken to you. God is waiting on you to bring them into manifestation. Oh my God. <sighs> it says, by faith, you mm-hmm. understand. We, it didn't say everybody, but those who have received the knowledge of the word of God now understand what to do. It said by faith, we understand that the worlds we are framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen, we are not made of the things which are visible. The prayer is so simple, Lord, I need the revelation of your word. As you have this revelation, you begin to declare. So let's pray. Father, we just need a revelation of your word. Can we pray right now, the Holy Ghost? I want you to picture your worst situation right now. Your worst situation that looks so embarrassing. As you picture that worst situation, begin to bring in another picture. Look at yourself triumphant. Look at yourself victorious. Maybe there's a condition in your body right now, which I don't know, but it's only you and God. Look at that condition that is causing you embarrassment. Begin to take another picture. Look at you heal. Look at you restore. Look at you rejoicing. How do you get there? Thank you, God. It says, you frame. Oh my God. Your aeon is your current situation right now. Your world, your personal world right now. That only you know. Your pastor may not know it. I don't may not know. I may not know it. God may not even show it to me. And I'm not going to try to peep into the realm of the spirit on anyone. Because people do that, they get into witchcraft. If God doesn't reveal it, all we need is the word. You see, frame is to speak, to direct, to ponder, to meditate, to roar. The Greek word is katatizbo. Oh, we have the power to change our life. To conform to God's word. It's in you already. All you need to do is look inside. Whatever that situation is, take the word of God and use to correct it. The power is in your hands. It's in you right now. You don't look for a mighty prophet from so 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 or a mighty man coming from so so so. No. It's in you. It's in your mouth. Glory to God. Your world, your aeon, the course of your life can be corrected it can be fixed you cannot lose hope you cannot lose hope on god it doesn't matter how long it has been that you have been waiting on god rise up today and take your place and make these corrections in the name of jesus you know one thing that the lord is ministering to me today is that we're going to find another session where we are just going to be declaring rima the word of god over our circumstances I'm still praying about it to find out what we can do. Maybe 30 minutes, we come together and we declare the word of God. So what we're doing is create, is is fixing our world. You see, we might all be encountering different circumstances right now. But once you lay hold of the word of God and begin to declare it and declare it and declare it and declare it, you will see changes in your life. Hallelujah. 
Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You see, the word of God has a part to replace what is seen. And that is what we need. We are in the end time right now. Hallelujah. I pray for everyone under my voice to be strengthened by the word of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. I pray over my voice right now. Anything Amen. that has become a distraction by the anointing of God's spirit. I, in the name of Jesus, we make a demand Amen. that they lose hold of you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory.